Welcome back. Colorado Department of Transportation is spearheading a campaign about driving under the influence of marijuana in partnership with the marijuana industry, public health, and law enforcement. And with more, we are joined by Sam Cole, CDOT's Traffic Safety Communications Manager, and Dr. Michael Kosnett, Medical Toxologist at the University of Colorado Anschutz Medical Center, who is doing research regarding the effects of marijuana on driving. Welcome, gentlemen. I'm glad Thank to have you, you both Thank here. You. All right, Sam, we're going to start with you. First of all, talk about CDOT's cannabis conversation. Well, we started the cannabis conversation last year after hearing from a lot of marijuana users who told us that they drive after using marijuana, even though it's obviously very dangerous. So we started having a lot of town hall forums, stakeholder meetings, just to find out why they drive high, what sort of assumptions and beliefs and behaviors they have about driving under the influence of marijuana. We're going to use all that information, including 15,000 responses that we've gotten to an online survey, to create a new marketing campaign that we hope will better connect with marijuana users next year. That is amazing, 15,000, that's mm -hmm. a lot of responses. Mm -hmm. Dr. Kosnett, back to you now. This is, your research is so incredibly important. So talk about the impact of marijuana use on driving and really how, how is the research going? Tell us what you found. Okay, well we, we have received a grant from the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment to study the effects of cannabis use on driving. And with that funding, we have set up at the University of Colorado a driving simulator laboratory. Oh. So we're not stunning people actually on the road, but in a very realistic simulator. The, um, the goal of our study in particular is to have each person be tested in the simulator before okay. and then after they smoke cannabis. They, they supply their own cannabis, we don't supply it to them, and mm -hmm. they smoke an amount that's the, the amount they most commonly use for the effect they most commonly desire. And we're studying three types of users. People who use it every day, mm -hmm. people who use it just once or twice a week, mm -hmm. and then we have a group of people who don't smoke at all ah. uh, and, and are just there to do this, the, the two sessions mm -hmm. but without smoking. The reason we're studying these people who smoke every day and we're comparing them to people who just smoke occasionally is that, is that there's been some research that suggests that people can develop a degree of tolerance to the impact of cannabis. But that hasn't been well sorted out, the mm -hmm. extent to which that affects them. So that is uh, the, one of the key goals of our research. That's fascinating. Okay, so Sam, how do then, does this fit into the whole cannabis conversation? It really does, because what we've heard from marijuana users, they want some really evidence-based information, some research mm -hmm. that's being done over here at the laboratory that will help convince them about the dangers. So we really appreciate the, the work that you're doing at the, at the lab. So let's also talk about b this being so crucial, Dr. Kosnett, because as you go through those different levels, why do you feel this is so important, especially to Coloradans right now? Well, the concept that people may become tolerant to a drug that they use on, on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Some people are on opioid pain medications, mm -hmm. for example, and after taking them for a while, they can function at a level that people who don't normally take opioid pain right. medications would be very much impacted. Um, we, we know that some people feel that they can handle their alcohol better than others, sure. but it's very clear that at a certain amount of alcohol consumption, absolutely no one should be driving. Right. We don't have as much information or knowledge about where those lines may occur or the extent to which those things occur with cannabis users. And some people who use cannabis feel that routine driving, just going down the street, seeing a stop sign, stopping, they mm -hmm. can do that fine. Right. But driving isn't always like that. Right. Sometimes you are exposed to emergency situations or situations where you have to really have good reaction time mm -hmm. and you have to be able to think through what should I need to do. Absolutely. Okay. And the nice thing about the study in our driving simulator laboratory is we can expose people to a whole spectrum of driving. Routine driving, and situations that yeah, you might not situational expect. driving, absolutely, that might come up. So Sam, we're going to take a look at some video. These are actually some ads that you're, what, are you trying out for next year? What's going on here? Yes, yeah, so we've got three different ad concepts that people can go to our website and basically take a survey and tell us if they like them, don't like them. The whole goal is to find that one ad that's actually going to change people's behavior and help convince them that driving under the influence of marijuana is dangerous. This one ad that I think you're looking at right now shows, um, something that's clearly unacceptable. Somebody mm -hmm. driving a school bus 
um, while they're high. Right. And if that's unacceptable, then you driving yourself or your family high is, should also be unacceptable. No, absolutely. You're just sort of touching on everyone that might be on the roads at the time. Exactly. Gentlemen, this is so awesome. We could talk for another two hours. I'm so glad you've been here. Join CDOT's Cannabis Conversation online, coloradocannabisconvo.com. Now, to learn more about current research, visit ucdenver.edu slash driving study. CDOT paid for today's segment. Stay with us.